Hi everyone, I'm Maddie and welcome back to my channel. We're about to go check out a coral reef, so come dive with us. Today our Bali adventure brings us to Ahmed on the east coast of the island. But me, Greg, hello, and our diving instructor need to get further out to sea, so we're jumping aboard this jukum, a traditional Balinese fishing boat. Coral reefs are home to lots of different animals and I've heard that we should almost definitely see a turtle here. Well, I'd love to see a turtle. Um, what was that all about? We're nearly there. Let's get up. So, goggles on so we can see. Fins on to help us swim against the currents. And now I need to get on my BCD. That stands for Buoyancy Control Device. It's a jacket that holds your air tank and connects to the regulators. Those are the mouth parts that we use to breathe. Like this. Right, final check's done. Are we all happy and ready to go? Yep. Then let's descend. Wow, this is beautiful. Oh, my ears are starting to feel funny. Better release some of that pressure. That's better. How are you getting on, Greg? Oh, it's like a different world down here. What can you see? That's the blue sea star. You'll never guess how they eat. Go on. They sit on top of their food and then they push their stomachs out through their mouths to digest it outside of their bodies. Oh, gross! They all have five arms. Yeah, and they have an eye on the end of each one. But what's really cool is that if one of those arms were to get damaged, it would regenerate and grow back into a full sea star. So cool. I wonder what else we can find here in the sandy shallows. It's like an underwater garden. Can you see anything? Whoa, what was that? Awesome, it's a ray. But what type? That's a blue spotted ray. Watch out, man, there's one below you. Oh, arms up. Those bright blue spots help to warn its enemies that it's dangerous. The spiny bits on the end of its tail are poisonous. But don't worry, they're quite shy. It's why they bury themselves in the sand to stay hidden. Greg, I think we should check on our air. This is my pressure gauge, and it tells me how much air I've got. Looks like I've got 160 bar. That's plenty. I'll keep an eye on it. When we hit 50 bar, it'll be time to go up. Maddie, Maddie, look! Wow, that ray is enormous. What is it? That is an eagle ray. You can tell because it has a beautiful spotted pattern on its back. It looks like it's flying. Did you know that eagle rays have been seen and heard jumping out of the water? Why? Well, we don't actually know why. Maybe it's to help shake off little bugs that build up on their skin. Or maybe they do noisy belly flops just for fun. <laughs> I've seen you belly flop. I am a perfectly good diver, thank you. There it goes. Into the distance. That was amazing. Best spot yet. There's so much life down here, but can you remember what animal we really wanted to see? That's right, it's a turtle. And what better than a beautiful hawksbill turtle? Hey, buddy. Hi, Maddie. Greg, turtles don't talk. But it's so cute. To us, maybe, but not for a sea anemone. The hawksbill sea turtle gets its name from its distinct beak-like mouth. Can you see how it's using that beak to get into crevices in the rock, searching for tasty morsels of sea anemone or jellyfish? And it's using its front fins to help steady itself against the coral. This is the underwater sign for the turtle. The hawksbill turtle is critically endangered, meaning that there are only very few left in the wild. We made a film all about turtle conservation, so make sure you check that out. Turtles swim so gracefully in the water. Much more gracefully than us. Upside down. Oh, don't mind me. With streamlined bodies and flipper like limbs, it's no wonder they're natural swimmers. After all, they have to navigate across oceans. Are you okay there, Greg? Oh, this is amazing. Let's see the sign for turtle again. Both hands together and wiggle your thumbs. You try at home. I think this hawksbill might have had enough swimming for now. Maybe it needs to go to the surface to breathe. See you later. Bye, Maddie. Greg, turtles don't talk. But it's so cute. Okay, fine. 
Bye, Bye turtle. turtle. Look what I've spotted. Where? Here inside this anemone. Nemo! Also known as a clownfish. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. See an enemy sting, right? Right. So how come this little dude's okay? Well, the clownfish get used to the sting, so they don't mind them. In fact, it's a great home because the stingy tentacles protect them from attack by other fish. So why do the sea enemies let them hang around? Because the clownfish eat the bugs that build up on their tentacles. It's what we call a symbiotic relationship. They both benefit from having the other around. Ah, very clever. Hey, Greg, I think our diving instructor has found something over there. What on earth is that? It's another blue starfish. Not that silly, the giant orange thing next to it. Oh, it's a sea cucumber. Yes, give me the camera. So, sea cucumbers are really weird creatures. Check this out. They don't have a brain, just a bunch of nerve cells, and they breathe through their anus. (laughs) Bottom breathers. Did you just stroke a sea cucumber? Maybe. Seriously, though, it is huge. Yeah, I reckon it's about the length of your arm. Let's get a close-up. Just when you didn't think they could get any weirder, if a sea cucumber feels threatened by another animal, it will spew out all of its organs with a toxic substance to scare them off. But it's okay, because they'll grow them all back in a few weeks. That really is weird. Let me just show you its underside. Don't worry, this won't hurt it. You can see they don't have any arms, but they do have thousands of tiny tubes under here. And these allow them to crawl along the ocean floor where they feed on algae and decaying organic matter. Lovely. I think it's time to leave the sea cucumber alone now. Mads, how much air do you have left? I have 110 bar. Last time I looked, I had 100 bar. Let me check. Just under. Here, you can see I have 90 bar. OK, I think we've got time to find one last thing. Yep, yeah, I'll follow you. I think our instructor has found something underneath this rock. Closer look. I can't see anything under there. Can you see anything? Let me have a try. Pass me the camera. Careful! Greg, don't get too close. Whoa! Shark! Oh my word, an actual shark. A real shark. Okay, don't make any sudden movements. It's staring at me. Is that a fish on its head? Yeah, maybe it's not so scary. Okay, it's going. Where's it going? I'm going to back off. I think it's gone. Hey, there it is again. That is a white-tipped reef shark, and Greg, you're right, you've got no reason to be scared. These sharks are pretty common on coral reefs, and during daylight hours, you'll usually find them, like you did, lying on the bottom in caves and under ledges. In fact, once they pick a resting site, they'll return to it several times the same day. They don't go out to hunt till it's night time, but this guy isn't interested in us. It's far more interested in bony fish, like eels. So why isn't it trying to eat that fish on its head? Well, like the sea anemone and the clownfish, these two have a symbiotic relationship. The fish nibbles off the little bugs that grow on the shark's skin, so the shark gets a clean and the fish gets a meal. And a free ride, of course. I see. Well, maybe they're pretty friendly after all. Guys, time's up. I'm on 50 bar of air. We've got to return to the surface. It's time to ascend. I really hope you've enjoyed this underwater adventure. Thank you so much for watching. And for more just like this, make sure you subscribe and check out our other vlogs from Bali. And to be the first in the know, click on the bell in the corner and you'll get notified every time we post a new video. That's all from us. Stay curious and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.